Germany's largest lender, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank. It's one of the most prestigious banks in the world, but it's also the most evil. On the surface, it's the oldest surviving bank in the world. To many eager students, an esteemed upper echelon institution, bulge bracket, managing billions of dollars for the rich and famous, including their notorious relationship with Donald Trump. But it only endured by trading principles for profit, funding global sex trafficking rings, money laundering for Russian oligarchs, LIBOR scandals, our favorite banker Bill Wong, and upper management suicides. With all of that, is Deutsche Bank still a bulge bracket? How is it that the bank involved in some of the worst atrocities in history still stands today? And can subscribers of this channel learn anything from the Machiavellian tactics the bank employs? 150 years ago, on a dark, stormy night in Prussia, Deutsche Bank is born. After conquering Europe, the bank has one thing in mind – expansion. They open offices in London, Shanghai and South America. Now, the bank looks beyond the Atlantic – America. Georg von Siemens, chief at the time, set sail for the new land in the hopes of firmly planting the Deutsche flag. When he arrives, he shakes hands with eccentric railroad tycoon Henry Willard. Henry pitches his dream to Siemens, building a transcontinental railroad, one that would finally span across the whole of America. Eager to make a splash in the States, Siemens gladly bankrolls the railroad. While the railroad was built successfully, costs ran high and Villard decided to divert some cash to build a mansion in Manhattan instead. Naturally, Siemens is furious. Deutsche Bank loses every penny and Villard refuses to pay any back. The first but not the last time the bank would fall for sweet words from sly charlatans. Siemens heads back home, his American prospects soured by the recent failure he decides to build Deutsche's position in Europe. Deutsche grows tremendously over the next decades as the bank becomes the sixth biggest in the world. Still, as the 20th century rolls around, Deutsche faces an existential threat. Leading up to the 1940s, Europe is undergoing a radical transformation. Adolf Hitler, discouraged painter turned politician, revives the ghost of nationalism in Germany. With impassioned speeches, he feeds off of commonplace feelings of disillusionment and defeat, which fuel his staggering rise to power. Manipulating an entire nation, he wields grief and morphs it into red-hot hatred. As the Nazi regime casts a growing shadow, a pressing question hangs over many German institutions. Succumb to the darkness or risk everything in retaliation. Deutsche Bank, a once respected and admired institution, side with the Nazi party, effectively becoming the devil's bank. In trading principles for profit, Deutsche does handsomely. They absorb banks from conquered nations and are busier than ever. But this newfound success comes at a price. Deutsche fires all their Jewish board members. They fund the construction of the infamous death camp, Auschwitz. It is clearly a party to genocide. As if that wasn't enough, Hitler needs the bank to sell all the stolen gold the Nazis have acquired from the victims. US soldiers come into this room and they discover 8,198 of these gold bars. Including fillings extracted from people's teeth. It is estimated that the Nazis stole $598 million. This is $1945. The bank continues to fund the regime and the death of millions throughout the following decades. Since the atrocities, Deutsche Bank has paid $5.2 billion to Holocaust victims. But can any amount of money wash the blood away? Heading into the late 80s, Deutsche Bank is being seduced. 
By nature, Deutsche is a ultra-conservative and pragmatic German bank. Its slash in a square logo is intended to represent growth within a risk-controlled framework. Still, their slow and steady returns shrink in comparison to the eye-watering profits from their American counterparts. Deutsche folds hook, line and sinker and abandon the risk-control part in the hopes that they can make some serious dough in the hot new derivatives market. Like a 16-year-old placing his first options trade on Robinhood, Deutsche becomes addicted. Traders get brazen and start to gamble. Deutsche flies in hotshot American options traders from Merrill Lynch to beef up returns. These cowboys completely change the corporate culture. In one hilarious example, when they can't pronounce the company name, they say they work for Douche Bank. Following every good party though, is one hell of a hangover and Deutsche's in for more than a headache. Leading Deutsche Bank executives started joining an online education program called Giga University. They found numerous courses there on how to build income, for example through micro PE, faceless automated YouTube channels or chat GPT copywriting. As a consequence, most Deutsche Bank executives quit and pursued the side hustles they built at Giga Uni full time. Of course this is a joke. But since we launched Giga University two weeks ago, we have already gained around 100 members. And so far, the feedback is amazing. We have over 20 courses on how to build income through different methods and multiple professors who coach our students. I spend most of my time coaching people on how to build an empire of faceless and partly automated YouTube channels that generate passive income. This is something you can start with zero investment. Also, I coach people on how to build a micro PE and how to make money investing in startups. If you want to find out more and join, click the link in the description. We are going to increase the price in two weeks to keep member numbers in check. It is 2007 and we are in the midst of the greatest housing bubble of all time. Champagne is popping in Frankfurt as Deutsche Bank's share price has hit an all-time high of $126, giving it a market cap of $75 billion. However, most people don't know it at the time, but the whole thing is about to come crashing down in a blaze of glory. Who is to blame? Douche Bank, of course. Having recklessly pumped the market by creating over 32 billion worth of credit debt obligations or CDOs. Realizing that CDOs, once their golden geese, now began to look a lot like foie gras, the upstanding bank that they are, Deutsche does the responsible thing. Escape the market as fast as possible, hedge their risk while continuing to market CDOs as the next best thing to customers. They quickly exit before everyone else has a chance to react and they then cook the books to hide billions of dollars in derivatives losses. They sweep it under the rug. But ticking time bombs only stay hidden for so long. Misery loves company like Deutsche loves bad debtors. It does not take long for the cracks to deepen at Deutsche as media personality turned real estate mogul Donald Trump needs money for a new casino. No bank in their right mind will touch him with a 10 foot pole. Fortunately for him, Deutsche Bank is not in their right mind at all. Blinded by greed, the bank ignores several red flags and lends Trump billions of dollars. When it comes time to pay Deutsche back, he refuses claiming force majeure to nullify the contract. In an absurd move, Trump argues that the 2008 economic crisis is an act of God and therefore he isn't liable to pay back a nickel. If that wasn't enough, Trump doubles down. He sues Deutsche Bank for $3 billion in damages for predatory lending practices. You would think this would spell the end of Deutsche and Donald, but like any toxic relationship, the breakup is just the beginning. Why did Deutsche Bank loan Mr. Trump $2 billion? 
Anshu Jain, co-CEO of Deutsche, coaxes Bill Brocksmith, a former trader, out of retirement. Bill could not believe the criminal activity that had been going on at Deutsche since he left. And neither could regulators. They put pressure on Deutsche and began slapping much heavier fines in the region of billions for the bank's fraudulent behavior. 58-year-old Brocksmith is so anxious he starts seeing a psychologist. Brocksmith tries to stop the illegal activities, but just becomes a laughing stock. But it is Bill who ends up being thrown into the fire when tapes are discovered of him admitting that Deutsche Bank is actively avoiding billions of dollars worth of taxes. As authorities dig deeper and get closer to the truth, Bill Brocksmith takes his life. Over the next four years, the bank slowly bleeds out. Its stock price falls a staggering 90% in what is a total disaster for employees and shareholders alike. Deutsche Bank's stock price falls to a pathetic $13. To top it all off, they are about to lose billions of dollars. And they have no idea where it's gone. If Deutsche's image wasn't already in tatters, it certainly is now. And why was a reputable bank lending huge sums of money to somebody widely viewed everywhere as a significant credit risk? Investigators are wondering how Trump got $500 million to build a skyscraper in Chicago or how about the extra $50 million needed to upgrade Trump's seaside golf course in Scotland? Golf courses which now in many cases are hemorrhaging losses. It looks like money laundering. Where did that money come from and what role did Deutsche Bank play in facilitating all of that? Surprise, surprise, Deutsche extended the line of credit. And surprise, surprise, like a magician on a date. When the bill arrives, Trump disappears. An inquiry concludes that the loans were only granted in the first place because of Deutsche employee Rosemary Rublik's cozy relationship with Trump's son-in-law, semi-legitimate businessman Jared Kushner. But it also is just this nearly perfect case study and how not to run a major global financial institution or a major global company of any name. Any hopes of retrieving the loaned money are quashed when in 2019 Donald Trump does the impossible. He becomes the 45th president of the United States. How in the name of God does the new president of the US owe a foreign bank over 360 million dollars? We know from these tax returns that Donald Trump was in dire financial shape. Deutsche is helpless. You can't just ask the US president for your money back. Still not fully aware of how they got into this mess. Deutsche is in even more trouble when the House Democrats subpoena the bank for the financial records of their esteemed client. In a cunning move, Trump sues the bank in an attempt to stop the record from being released. The judge rejects Trump's suit, ruling that Deutsche must comply with Congress and proceed to hand over the records. To which the bank simply replies, We have lost the records. Trump informs Deutsche hell will freeze over before they get their money back. But the bank's final death blow lurks around the corner. Having become obsessed with the death of his father several years ago, Val Brocksmith downloaded all his father's file to a hard drive. He reaches out to several journalists to dig through the files to see if they can uncover some missing puzzle pieces. Val has in his possession key bank documents that investigators sought to help make their case. Desperately seeking the truth about his dad's death. Val Brocksmith becomes an informant for the FBI with top secret information on deals involving Deutsche, Trump and Russia. But before he can tell them anything, he too is found conveniently dead in his home in 2019. The official cause of death is from a drug overdose, but this kicks off a wave of conspiracy theories surrounding Deutsche Bank. And speculation heats up whether the father and son's death were not a coincidence at all. In what is one of the toughest periods in the bank's history, the Deutsche executives bring in the only man that can save the crippled bank. 
Christian Seving is brought in to save the failing bank after the disastrous reign of John Cryan brings it to its knees. In 2021, Deutsche makes its first profit in 8 years and it looks like a turnaround could be on the cards. Well, appearances can be deceiving. Despite everything, Deutsche crosses paths with the Wall Street's angel of death, Bill Wang. It appears the bank's appetite for destruction cannot be sated as it signs off on massive margin loans for Archegos. Bill Wang's hedge fund quickly implodes, but somehow Deutsche manages to escape relatively unscathed. But many experts believe they are walking on thin ice. The plan that they produced several months ago, while reasonable, is about five years too late. Having maintained so much power and single-handedly changed the course of history, their shady past is finally catching up with them. The stock price has collapsed over the past years and has finally put an end to the bulge bracket debate. If they were bulge bracket, they are not anymore. It's been a slow deterioration right. in profitability for years and it's probably going to continue. One of the slowest train wrecks on Wall Street, Deutsche continues to bleed out from 1000 cuts. It's almost poetic. In the pursuit of everything, Deutsche lost not only money, but themselves.